I am so happy that you're able to join us for this extended interview. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get more killer resources. Hey friend, are you looking to land a remote gig ASAP? Well, did you know that we not only have a ton of online jobs you can apply to on our site, but now we are also sending them straight to your inbox. I'm happy to announce that we will be sending our email subscribers legit online jobs every Wednesday. We have done hours of research so you don't have to. If you want to be the first one to hear about the remote gigs we find, go to theoffbeatlife.com to subscribe. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here for this extended interview with Jen where she's going to share with us how to conduct customer interviews to provide the best products and services for your audience. Hey Jen, how are you? Hi Debbie, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Before we get to all of your incredible tips and tricks, can you tell us about you and why you live an offbeat life? Sure. I went to NYU and uh, I majored in finance and accounting. Can't really get any much any more boring than that. Mm-hmm. And kind of started on my corporate job journey and went from a, you know one enterprise to another. And after a while, I just felt really unhappy in New York, and I just wanted to take a year off and just ask my you know just thought that I'm just going to travel and um, find freelancing gigs to to support myself and take a bunch of courses that I've always wanted to take and and just see where that takes me. Uh, so that's how I kind of got started. And once I started to understand like that I should, you know, I can get gigs um, online and, and and there's something to that. And that allows me to become location independent. I, I really kind of got interested in the in committing to that lifestyle. But and so I traveled to Australia and kind of s- settled here and then just travel across Australia and, and a few other countries. Um, but then when the uh, when I had an opportunity to join Uber here in Sydney, I again kind of went back to that corporate life again, just felt because it felt safe. It, you know, I got laid off in May due to the pandemic. And that's when I was like, you know what? Like, clearly, like you were not happy at Uber. <laughs> you weren't happy in New York. Clearly there's a pattern, you know, what, you know, now is a time to really commit to this digital nomad life and and do things that you want to do and have control over your life. I love that. And now you have your own business, you're a remote entrepreneur and a digital nomad. So kudos to you, Jen, for being able to do that and to really follow yourself and your passions. So today we're going to be talking about conducting customer interviews to really give your audience the right products and services, right? So why is this really important? Why do we need to do this before we even create the product? Yeah, you know, I, this is a part of like a bigger kind of a buzzword called design thinking that, you know, in the startup community, it's basically you are, it's a human centered design. Like if you're creating, no matter what you're creating, there's people behind, there are people behind it using it. Even if you're creating something like an algorithm for a, you know, that's, uh, for a for a software like you there are at the you have to understand who the end users are in order to create algorithms and and, and features that that support their you know activities and workflows what i always i mean i i work as a consultant advising start, uh, startups and and small medium businesses that's kind of one side of the business and i have my own travel uh, travel app that i created launched a couple weeks ago called love Anter. and one thing that I, w- I was really surprised by that is like people just building product without speaking to a single customer. And the thing is that a lot of people assume that like, if I have this problem, this problem is, you know, there's a community, there's, there's a market there that I can sell to, which is kind of misguided because the product, the way the product design works isn't about, well, there is a, there's a problem. Like, you know, people can't do this. Like, so I'm going to come up with my solution. But there are different reasons why that problem exists. And if you don't uncover that ahead of time and understand why people, why that problem is, exists today, why no one has really solved it, or if there are available solutions out there, they're not adequately solving the problem, then you have to understand that before designing a product that would stand out, that would be different. 
So now when you actually want to do interviews, how do you do that? How do you find the right people to interview, right? Especially if you don't even have the customers yet. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, there are three times in, in, in when you're building a new product, there are three times, at least three times where you have to speak to customers. One is before you create a product. Second time is when you have like a sketches and you have a concept, you, you validate that. And then once you have an MVP, which is a minimal viable product, which just means you have basic functionalities that people can use. So you can kind of iterate on how to improve the user experience on like using the product. The one that you do before you even create anything, I call it ethnographic interviews. That's really kind of trying to go after people that you you think that you your product would serve and understanding kind of how they address that problem today. So you have to start with first really thinking about like what that profile is. So, you know, who who are the type of people like that are going to use your 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 product? And I don't mean I don't mean just like generally like, oh, like, you know, demographic data, like, you know, people, you know, women in their between age, uh, you know, 25 to 35. I mean, like personality. So it's easier if I just give an example. So for Levanter, my company, it's a travel planning app that uh, helps, you know, p- you collaborate with your friends as you, you know, collect ideas and you make decisions together and how you kind of coordinate and then eventually kind of creating the itinerary much more seamlessly. So the problem that I'm trying to solve is, you know, people love traveling, people love traveling with their friends, but coordination is really challenging, right? But the thing is, like, there are so hundreds, hundreds of travel apps claiming to be a travel planner. So why are people still using Excel? So that's a question that I had. So in order to kind of unearth, like, go deeper into the problem and, and talk to people and find out what kind of people I need to we need to talk to, I thought, well, what kind of... I thought about, um, I did research, obviously, and because travel is more experience that I'm familiar with, and I'm sure most people are familiar with, kind of like looked back and thought about my own behavior as a start, as a start. So, you know, when I travel, um, I, I kind of, you know, start like, you know, looking at different, you know, ideas, I do some research, save them somewhere, and then I take email, write it, like, copy and paste the link and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I do all that stuff. And realize that one, um, not everyone does that. Not everyone's super like organized in terms of traveling. When you're traveling with friends, uh, normally there's one person that like becomes a kind of takes their lead role of planning, right? Um, And when I started kind of realizing that's the behavior, I thought we need to talk to people who play the role of that planner, who love bringing people together, who always organize trips with people, who, who create these insane Excel itineraries and they're who are active in travel communities like girls love travel, right? They love talking about it. Those people are the kind of people that um, are organized, that plan trips, that think about it and invite other people to join their journey. So that's who we need to talk to to understand all the different steps that person could take in the journey of active planning. So you got to kind of think about the behavior and find the most extreme profile, someone that will do all kinds of stuff, much more than general population. Those are the people you talk to because the norms don't follow, the extremes don't follow the norms. The norms follow the extremes. And if you talk to people who are just that extreme there, they go out of their way to solve that problem. And the people that would be most grateful for your product, what you're trying to build. Like those people are the first people you talk to because they're going to give you insights into all the different tools that they use today to circumvent the problem and kind of give you much more, much more wider, much wider breadth of insights. So can you take us through the actual questioning for, you know, someone who is thinking about starting to create a product, where did they start? How did they find the right questions? Yeah. So when you're finding, sorry, I I think that I I kind of missed a step there. Like, so once you have that profile, what you do is you can use uh, websites like respondent.io, or if you're in Australia, um, askable or userinterviews.com in order to kind of pose quite a screener questions to find the profiles that you're looking for. So for instance, like for me, what I did was, okay, you know, do you normally create itineraries? 
right? What are the tools that you have tried? You know, um, would you be able to show me your itinerary? So to make sure that we are going after the right people, that type A traveler. So you kind of ask these questions to, to make sure that you get the right people to talk to. And that's how you recruit them. Normally, you offer them a little bit of incentive. And um, so $4, $50, whatever it is. And it, you know, when there is a, a, a monetary reward involved, people can lie. Not, not most people don't, but, you know, there are some bad actors. So you got to make sure you screen them correctly. And after that, what you, to answer your second question, you know, what you do is you kind of think about ethnographic interview when you're trying to understand them, like you have to kind of understand their life. And not just about, you know, uh, we, well, you know, how you plan a trip, just kind of like, why do you travel? When did you start traveling? Who do you travel with? Right. What kind of things do you like to do? Like, do you, are you normally very social and you kind of, you know, you love organizing group dinners and, you know, things like that in your, you know, when you're not traveling, just kind of, you got to round them out as, as people. So like the first question that I always ask is just kind of that, just really trying to understand like who they are as people and their personalities. And afterwards, you, what you do is there are a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, and depend, depending on, you know, the, the product you're trying to build or the types of people you're talking to, but you can say, Hey, have you, you've done this in the past, right? You've created itineraries in the past. Can you show me one of them and tell me what went through the process? And you just kind of let them talk. So they will say, Oh yeah, I went to New Zealand and, you know, this is what I did. Like I, you know, I wanted to go so that I could go bungee jumping or something. And I, I, I like this kind of activity. So this is what I did and this is where I went, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So like you just kind of ask them to remember a very specific experience from their past and then just tell their story. And then the second thing you can do is, okay, now let's say, where do you want to travel to next? Let's, you know, and, and ask them to perform a task. Uh, that's relevant to your product. So for us, it was like creating itinerary or travel planning. So we said, sh- you know, share your screen. It's over a Zoom call. Share your screen and let's like let's say, where do you want to travel to next? Okay, you want to go to Austria. Let's do some research. Like, what do you do first, right? And then you just kind of ask them questions to understand why they're doing what and how they're saving things and 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 seeing the behavior. So. The purpose of these interviews is this, you know, ethnographic interviews is to, to really kind of be like a fly on the wall and you just observe them. And then, and ho- like you're just kind of hearing their thoughts as they're doing it. So like that's, that's what you're trying to mimic. So, so you kind of have them create an environment where they're performing a specific task, talking about a specific experience that will jog the memory and make sure that they're uh, giving you very contextually relevant, um, answers. That's awesome. So now once you have those answers, how do you actually make that into an actual product? That's really challenging. It's more of an art, but you gotta, you know, one thing you gotta remember is that people are terrible at telling you what they want. So you never use these interviews to say, what do you, what do you want? You know, what features do you want? What, what do you wish you had? People are horrible at telling you that. So, and you don't also do like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking of. Do you like it? Yes or no? Like, their answers are going to be biased and they're not going to, they're most likely going to be incorrect and, and inconsistent from their actual behavior. So what you do is really, you know, try to understand the why and then identify the problem and create some sketches in terms of how you may be able to improve that workflow and, and just kind of making some assumptions about assumptions about some of the solutions that you believe that they would really enjoy that will solve a very particular problem in their current process. And then you draw the sketches, you know, consider some options, and then you go back to different users or the same users and show it to them and then kind of get the react, get their reaction to see if you're on the right path. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Jen, for being here today and sharing with us all of these incredible tips and tricks. If our listeners want to know more about you, where can they find you? Yeah, um, you can email me directly if you have any questions and you just kind of need some advice. It's Jen at J-E-N at levanter.com, L-E-V-A-N-T-R.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this extended interview with Jen. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get the full interview where she shares how she became a remote business consultant and startup founder.
Hey friend, have you been wanting to start a podcast? I know it can be overwhelming in the beginning. Believe me, I have been there. Lucky for you, we have created a new site called howtocreatepodcast.com that shares a ton of freebies that can help you get started. From launching, growing to monetizing, we share it all in one place. Visit howtocreatepodcast.com for more information. Thanks for joining me on this extended interview. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We can also chat some more on Facebook at The OB Live. I'll talk to you soon.